Thank you, everybody, for joining us for our talk with Miriam. Um, she's our final studio artist talk for the day. Just a quick overview of um, Miriam's very excellent uh, artist bio. Um, Miriam is an interdisciplinary aesthetic, uh, interdisciplinary artist uh, working in many mediums, including um, industrial materials, uh, fiberglass, reflective sheets. Um, light acrylic paint more than more. Um, she was uh, born and raised in Iran um, and has been uh, presenting work um, all over the world, including the United States, France, Russia, Germany, Iran. Um, she's also been the recipient of prizes and grants uh, internationally as well. Um, she currently teaches at Georgia State. Um, and has been uh, with the studios program for for how long? Do you think it's around one and a half year? Okay, yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember right off the top of my head. That's great. Um, a lot of her work um, in practice has to do with the intersections of different subject matters, processes, materials, um, capturing the tensions between two different things like um, reality and aspirations, um, traditions and contemporaneity, and individuality and uh, community. And then uh, one of the things that I'm most interested in that you do is um, exploring the ways of exchanging knowledge. Um, I will put in the chat uh, links to Miriam's website as well as uh, the gallery that represents her, Hathaway. Uh, so if you guys are interested in looking at um, her art more uh, or reading more about it, um, that'll be there. But uh, now I'll turn it over to Miriam. Thank you so much for your introduction, Emma, and hi again, everybody, and thanks for joining us for this weird <laughs> virtual open studio that we used to do it uh, every year, and it was a very exciting moment for us, definitely. But I'm glad that right now we have all this opportunity to meet each other virtually as well. Um, but I actually wanted to... Uh, share with all of you guys here uh, in terms of my art practice is how this uh, current situation actually impacted my artworks and how I try to adapt myself as an artist to this new situation because honestly, um, I was really at the first weeks and the days really freaked out and I didn't know how I want to go. It was really stressful time for me. Then I tried to start thinking um, deeply uh, into this matter and see how I can figure out a way to survive and thrive and see how I can actually link myself to my surrounding as uh, the past experiences that I have. And um, I realized that I always ask my viewers to, uh, like, see things through different views. And this is my core concepts of the work. So I have to do something as well. Uh, I look around myself and see um, the most important and uh, influential connection that right now I have is with nature because the only thing that I can do is just going out for a very quick short run or walk in the neighborhood. And as all you know, Atlanta is very green and springtime is the best time to explore. And then basically most of my works are like main, uh, mainly on the formal language, very abstract and geometric abstraction, both related to my background with the architectural uh, Persian works that I've inspired by, plus many Western um part that uh, at the same time I have influenced by. And I was looking for opportunities to mix this all backgrounds with sort of a combination of those ones to uh, very fluid forms or um, something that I have right now inspired through the nature or plants or everyday collectings of I found objects of the flowers, blossoms, and I started like taking pictures of this process of my everyday journey and um, try to see how I can incorporate them in my work. Uh, so what I want uh, actually to do is if you guys 
uh, can see, I can share my screen with some of my previous work first quickly. And then, um, okay. So, um, can you all see my screen now? Yes. Okay, very good. So, um, I actually make the folder for uh, before the COVID, how my work looks like, and then the COVID impacts and what is in the midst of the COVID. So, I'm going to start with sharing some of the works here now. Uh, if you can see them all, can you see all the full screen? Yes. Okay, very good. So here is one of my uh, previous works, a little bit older works that uh, from the series of Folded Mystery. As Emma mentioned, uh, I'm using multiple disciplines and mediums to uh, explore uh, my ideas and concepts, which is mostly about um, experiencing the moments of uncertainty and also find a ways to see things through different lens. This is actually a photo sculptural uh, wall installation with reflective materials, a photography based, and also um, window screens that people as an audience can explore the piece or even have this experience of corporal uh, corporal uh, experience of the body and get into some part of the piece to explore it through different angles. Uh, then uh, one of the other mediums that I'm really using a lot is light as the medium and also light and shadow and how the impacts our surrounding and how we can actually make a discussion through that. This is another uh, actually wall uh, sort of sculptural uh, work. Um, this is uh, another work that is still uh, a layered um, of a screen, window screens, plus um, a video projection. It's actually, this is a bigger piece that is very interactive and audience can be part of the piece, walk around that. You can see this is actually has the two parts. One is the sculptural form and then a, a, a floor piece full of the um, um, salt and also some blood capsules because the actual piece is about a lake in my home country, Iran, Lake Ermia, which is shrinking during the past decades. So I'm really interested also in the environmental issues concepts as well. And this is a work that I have actually uh, made based on that. These are um, the other series that I have worked in two different medium. This one uh, is um, still life photography with again, like constructed landscape that I have made through uh, some found um, objects of the uh, industrial or uh, sort of construction buildings uh, materials and uh, adding uh, reflective sheets, also mirrors and natural light, uh, plus acrylic uh, paints on wood panel. So these are the series that I've had in Photo London last year. Um, and also have the show at New York um, at El Gavimer Gallery with the Roya Hajavis projects uh, in New York City as uh, one of the projects that um, I have worked with and I'm actually working with her uh, for my next exhibitions who is suffering from the situation now and uh, most of my things are postponed and canceled sort of for the next year. So this is the same uh, concept and same part of this uh, project, Epiphany, but uh, paintings on the whale fabrics. And these are multiple uh, layers of the fabrics, which is uh, hand painted uh, and also with a wooden frame um, handmade. Uh, then uh, the frame actually would be part of the piece. So these are multiple uh, works of this project that I had uh, a show at Hathaway Gallery uh, at the summer. And then these are all part of that show. These are the drawing parts of that, but the drawings is still on the uh, whale fabrics in different layers. 
So I think this is uh, just uh, a quick part of um, the study that I've had before. And then I'm gonna share with you all also what I have explored during these days. These are my daily photos. These are my diaries, sort of like visual diaries that I have around whatever. Every day I have looked at, exploring all the shapes and the ergonomy of the forms and the fluidity of that and how these uh, foregrounds and backgrounds are worked together to make a very like nice final um, impact on my works and how um, in the nature we can explore the purest uh, forms and also uh, textures maybe. Uh, so you can see some of them in my next folders as uh, how I can actually transform them into uh, my artworks. So yeah, like beautiful springtime that unfortunately we couldn't share all together as we used to, but uh, definitely there is always a hope. And um, you know, like uh, this is maybe, give me, uh, more time this time this moment give me more times to think about uh, the life and death and having hope and how important it is to support each other and to spend our time in learning more exploring more I have spent more most of my time um, reading books that I wasn't actually had I hadn't had a time or even like uh, listening always every day to the podcast related to art or even to the everyday life. I try not to explore more the news and the number of the rising cases of the coronavirus, which is really give you stress out. Uh, and yeah, so I love this beautiful uh, nature looks of uh, Atlanta right now. And it's a very short period of time. So we need to just go out and explore and see how they're gonna actually impact us in a good way. So then I'm gonna actually share with you all um, this series of work that I have been working in the past mm, weeks. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. Uh, these are uh, some cyanotypes techniques that uh, I have done by collecting all of these uh, materials while I was walking around and then try to explore that and transform them not just in the form of cyanotype as the um, actually techniques that they usually use it because I'm not really a person who wants to do things in a traditional convention, conventional art making ways. I usually want to go beyond and see things again, like in different forms. I have made with, with different forms of the leaves and blossoms and flowers combined sometimes with some um, dead and live um, plants. And also sometimes exploring different textures and patterns. And then start like cutting them up and uh, use multiple forms and then see how I can actually relate them to my main practice, which is inspired by the space, a spatial experience, and also architecture. Um, maybe in, in this new forms, you can see how I can, I actually I have tried to incorporate that aspects of my work as using arches or like things that you can see around you whenever you are inside the home or even this could be a reference to a window that will be always just, especially in this moment, we're just gonna actually explore the outside with that. This is my workspace. This is very tiny, small studio space that I have provided at home. 
uh, to explore things. And then, uh, yeah, these are some other examples. I have a pile of uh, cyanotypes experiences. And that's all for now. Um, and I don't know if anyone has any questions. I would be happy to answer. I do have a question, Mariam. Thank you so much um, for your presentation. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have my face up today. It's one of those days. Um, but my question for you is about these cyanotypes that you are working with now. Um, and I'm thinking, are you still experimenting with how those might be placed into an exhibition space? Are you, they, from the photographs that you took, they seem small, and I love how small they are, but I'm also thinking about the way in which you very often have um, historically exhibited and installed your image in your work um, in the past has always been in kind of multiples and in arrangements. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you're thinking about next steps for those cyanotypes and how they might be displayed singularly together, et cetera. Yeah, actually, uh, that's a good question, Jordan. Um, that's um, the way that maybe I don't have exactly the final answer for that because yeah, I'm, no, that's okay. yeah, because I'm in the midst, like in the middle of that. But definitely, what I want to say, as I told um, you all guys, that uh, I would prefer to have this cyanotype as a collection or even like. I have seen the whole new series as an exhibition or a place that I can incorporate all of this actual cyanotype pieces on one, for example, side of the walls as an installation of all of these experience. And then uh, I was thinking about having another uh, like exploration of collecting, well, while I was collecting some of them, then they're dying. So most of them are the dried version of them. I talked to Emma about that, that I'm going to collect all of these dyed ones and actually the part of my uh, uh, wall is full of these like dyed plants right now as the full installation of it as the piece. And then like this juxtaposition of life and death would be the main concepts and it's a very good actually process because as the cyanotype is sort of traditional form of like uh, uh ways um without the camera but i'm interested in that as a section but uh the other point is cyanotypes is sort of quick this is the process of like having this happens and then the light in this process is another resource that I have seen in my other projects, very important, impactful mm -hmm. elements. So this process I have uh, actually intentionally uh, picked to do the cyanotypes because this is not the actual photography that I have done in the previous sections of my works, but then yeah, like having them all as the actual process of the cyanotypes and then transferring them to the new pieces with combining cyanotypes as the photography medium and the um, painting with acrylic inks. I hope I can answer. No, thank you. Question. That was really helpful. Thank you. And um, thanks for sharing your work with us today. Of course, thank you. Awesome. Um, uh, well, thank everybody for coming again. Uh, again, if you wanted to look more at um, Miriam's past works, uh, those links are in the chat for her website as well as uh, Hathaway Gallery that represents her. Um, thank you all for taking some time today to join us and especially to Miriam for um, showing us what she's been up to. Thank you so much and we'll see everyone tomorrow. Thank you, Miriam, and thank you, Emma, for facilitating uh, this Zoom. So stay Thank safe and healthy. Bye. Bye. Thank you.